And Big O and Yeko Kongu joins us now, the freshman phenom for USC men's basketball. Uh, tough road trip, Big O. Uh, you're, you certainly played well, and it was nice to see you bounce back after missing a couple games. How difficult was it for you to, to, to take that week off, or did you feel refreshed on this trip? Uh, taking that week off was really tough because coming into the mountain schools, the altitude really hits you hard. I hadn't done anything for about a week and a half, so I was out of shape a little <laughs> bit. So I was really tired going up and down the court in the mountain school because we're so high in the sky. Pulled up, pulled on that jersey a couple times? Man, absolutely. <laughs> so, Jay Hart, I need one <laughs> quite a few times. Big three-game stretch coming up for you guys to finish off the season strong. How do you get that thing turned around after, after a little skid here? Uh, I think we'll be all right. Uh, these are very winnable games for us. But then again, they're very losable games. So we'll come into game and practice, work hard, scout Arizona's, and then next week UCLA. Yeah, you get the Arizona's this week. That means another matchup with uh, Zeke Naji. It's, it's been fun watching uh, you go up against a lot of these other great young bigs in, in the league this season. What was that first matchup like with him? And uh, you know, how do you prepare when, when, when you're going up uh, uh, against another top player? Um, you know, it's really fun because I know Zeke personally. You know, he's Nigerian like me. Me and him get along. Whenever I see him, I say, what's up? So, you know, it helps, helps me play better whenever I play against people I know, especially against a great player like Zeke. Does that mean you're talking to him on the floor? I saw you talking to Timmy Allen a little bit at Utah. I know that I know you, you know him. You talk to Zeke a little bit? Yeah, I talk to Zeke and anybody <laughs> I know already. I always talk to him. Talk to this. I'm always interested. A young man like you comes into the league. What were your goals, you know, as a, as a freshman this year? Obviously, you're leading the team in rebounds and scoring. What were your goals coming in this year, and what you wanted to get done as a freshman? Uh, honestly, I just came in here trying to win and have fun while doing it. You know, I don't want to stress too much. I just wanted to play basketball with confidence. You know, you had a really cool thing happen this year. You're, you're a young guy, and you've already had your jersey retired. Your high school retired your jersey, and I know it, it's not just your jersey. It's your brother, your late brother's jersey as well. What, what did that mean to you to, to, to go up in the rafters uh, of your high school? Uh, it meant a lot to me, you know. It meant a lot to me and my mom because, you know, the school cares about my family so much, me and my older brother. They've done so much for my family over the past couple of years, so it was just a blessing to have my jersey retired. You guys have struggled a bit, a little bit on the road this year. What, what is it about going on the road that makes it such a tougher environment? And how do you guys figure it out how to, how to get that? Obviously, a home record's been great this year. Just figuring it out on the road as, as kind of a young team. Uh, every game in the Pac-12 is hard. You know, on the road is even harder. On the road, we don't play a full 40 minutes like we're supposed to. So, you know, we have a sudden lapse. So I think uh, we should be all right going the uh, rest of the season because we're at home now. We're going to talk to uh, you know one of the college basketball writers here in in, in a few minutes, uh, Aaron Torres, and we'll ask him about your your NBA draft stock. I don't know how much you you want uh, necessarily to to talk about that, but you know what will go into your NBA decision. I mean, you're a guy that. Uh, you know, it seemed like came in a little bit under the radar. You, did, you didn't get McDonald's All-American, which most people think was a crime. Uh, but, you know, you were Mr. Basketball in, in California in back-to-back -back years, which very few people have done. And, you, you know, you're projected very high now. I don't know how much you look at that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, what, what all goes into, into that decision for you? Uh, I don't try and think about it, but, you know, I see it all the time. Yeah. People are tagging me on Instagram. <laughs> and I just ch ch have it going through this ear out the other one. I just want to play basketball for USC and whatever happens after the season happens. What are you looking to, obviously a young player, what are you looking to improve in your game? Obviously a, a good start, solid start to your college career here. But what do you, what do you want to improve in your game if, if not moving to the next level? Uh, just overall everything. You know, passing could use a little work. My shooting could use work, ball handling overall conditioning, you know, I think it's working on all aspects of my game. You got to go to an NBA game last week when we were in uh, Utah. We went to see uh, the Jazz play uh, Chim, uh, Chim as he met to DeMar DeRozan and the Spurs. How different is that game when you look at that game and you, and you start to look at, hey, how, how are my skills going to translate to the next level? What's my role going to be at the next level? You know, you're looking at that core, you know, what do you see as, as the differences uh, you know, between the college game and the NBA game? Uh, for the NBA, there's a lot of spacing because you can't be in the key for so long yeah. on defense. So everyone's just spread out, not a lot of help defense. So me, if I just run the floor a lot, I can be a huge impact because I can already bring a lot of energy, rebounding and all that. So the NBA gave a lot of spacing. A lot, everyone can shoot the ball. How has this year been for you outside of basketball? Obviously, you got the start of the year with school and, and all this stuff. You know, the football season's going on. How's this school? How's the whole How's the whole experience at USC been for you so far? Uh, my college experience has been really fun. You know, I've met a lot of new people, a lot of cool people. Uh, I'm doing good in school right now. I'm just having fun being a college freshman. Were you always a basketball player? What did you play growing up? I used to play tennis when I was younger, when I was about 9, 10 years mm. old. Wow. 
When did you stop playing Leonard tennis? Leonard Moore's got some tennis experience. Um, You'd be a heck of a tennis player. I mean, you know, you'd certainly cover the net. Uh, I probably stopped playing uh, before I started junior high. Who was your basketball role model? Who got you into the sport? Who were you modeling your game after? Um, I just always loved watching players like uh, Brandon Roy play when I was younger. Yeah. Brandon Roy, Great player. Brandon James. Uh, I didn't really model my game after them, but I just loved watching them play. I always bring this up to Jordan. I used to, okay, I used to have a great, I used to have a great, move. a great move. Sean, we're on radio, just yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know. I, I mean, so I'm sorry a, at home you can't see this, here. but I, I would get the ball in the post, and I, and I, the first three times I'm going middle, I'm going center, I'm going, I'm dropping into the key, maybe a drop step. But then I went to the up and under. How do you stop the up and under, man? I felt like it was an unstoppable weapon. Uh, the up and under, <laughs> you just gotta down the ground. Honestly, don't. I jump. put you in the popcorn machine, big I'll get you up there, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, had a, you, you gave it. You gave the up and under a couple times uh, yesterday. You know, give, give that. You utilize the up and under hammer. as well. Then you know, you know what I'm talking about. Then yeah, it's I mean, a great move, man. Yeah, one of my go-to moves. There you go. that's, what, see, that's what I told you about, Jordan. Sean, you ever dunk a basketball? I, no, I could. I, we were just talking about this going in here. We, Look grounded. We, we were comparing our hands, game. and the reason he can dunk with that one in because he can grip the ball. I could never grip the ball, so I always had to go up and double tap the backboard and then lay it up. That was my that was my signature though. That he, I was known for that. <laughs> <laughs> Big O, what was your best dunk this season? My best dunk this season, uh, we were at Oregon State. Yeah. We got a steal, and Ethan hit a uh, basketball back to me. I had a mean one-hand slam. Ooh. Yeah, he's got you as the trailer a couple of times. The one against Temple was pretty good as the trailer. That gives you a little momentum going into it. That one, too. Yeah, Ethan always has a way to find me in the open lane. Obviously, a, a big uh, day in L.A. for, for basketball with, with the memorial for Kobe Bryant today. T- talk just, I mean, just a little bit. What did Kobe mean for you and your career? And any thoughts on that? I was always a LeBron fan growing up, so I didn't really watch Kobe a lot. But I always respected his game, his mentality towards it. I have mad respect for Kobe and what he's done for Los Angeles. Uh, we got a ton of respect for you. Love watching you play this season. It's not done yet. Big O will be on display Thursday night against Arizona. That's a 7 o'clock game at the Galen Center. That's one that we should sell out. A huge opportunity for USC to bolster its NCAA tournament resume. And Onyeka Kongwu will be leading the, the way dance. for the Trojans. We will talk a little bit about Big O and the Trojan hoops next. Uh, we'll see if we can get Aaron Torres on the line. You're listening to Trojans Live.